Hey, I was uh, thinking today about something that I really wanted to share with you that I think is probably one of the most important elements of all of this, of meditation, of um, our change, our actual shifting. Um, It's kind of an interesting thing. A lot of times when we, especially if you're already doing some type of spiritual seeking, if you're someone who, when you do something that feels off, when you're dishonest, when you do something out of fear, when you're in an addiction, whatever, there's a part of us that that asks, why do I always do this? And then we go on this scavenger hunt to find why we do this. But what we don't understand is the part of us that's doing the scavenger hunt is the same part of us that did it. So it's still the culprit that we got to go past. And I hear from people that when they meditate, they always say stuff like, you know, I, I, I'll go off on a tangent and then I bring my thoughts back and I try to focus my thoughts and I don't recommend that. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome for people that want to do that. But who's doing the focusing? Who's bringing thoughts back? How do you even, why do you think there's a back to go to? People say, what happens if my mind goes off on a tangent a lot? And I'm like, a tangent from what? Your mind's going wherever it's going, and you're, you're acting like right here is better than if ideas are coming up over here. And that's a trick that we have with ourselves, is that we're still trying to do things from the mind. And there's a big difference between doing something from the mind and doing it from the heart. So if you do something that feels off, Let's say you lie to someone, and then you go, why, did I always, why do I always do this? And then you go through this thing. Oh, it's because of my dad. That's why. Whatever. Who's the one on this scavenger hunt doing it? Because that's the one that still lied. And sometimes we go on this scavenger hunt to find the reason why we do it, and we have a fake breakthrough, meaning we have a breakthrough, but it's not the real one. It's not the one where you transcend it. You have a breakthrough that's big enough where you find out a cause of why you did it, but you didn't transcend the part of you that actually did the thing. And real change comes when you go past the part of you that's doing the problem, past the part of you that's feeling addicted, past the part of you that's in your fear. So it's one thing to have a breakthrough about why that's happening, but it's a totally different thing when you actually have teeth in your transformation and it become, you can go to a place where you no longer want to do that anymore. So that's why, It's one thing, so you're searching for this, but if you really close your eyes and sit or follow your highest excitement and do something that moves you into your body, not more into your head, then you transcend it. So you have to go to a place that's past the part of you that did the thing that you don't like or does the habit or has the issue. You want to go past it. You want to look past it. And the part of your mind that you have steering your thoughts and trying to focus on one area, that's your mind trying to do all this this stuff. And you want to go past it. So when I meditate, I meditate from my body, not my mind. And I sit and all these thoughts come up, but I just let them be there. I don't try to change them. I don't try to fight them. I don't adjust what is. I don't argue with what is. I don't try to get them back to... That would make meditation exhausting. But if you sit here long enough, you will find the root cause on a real level and identify that it's not you. And then the part of you that was doing the searching actually becomes not you. And you can see that you're the one looking at that part. And then you move past your old story and you transcend it and that's actual transformation. Where you actually let that part of you go by being a space that's bigger than all that you've ever been before. By sitting with it and allowing everything that comes up to just be there because this thing was you. You're like this and then you meditate and if you sit here long enough, it'll start to leave you. But if you are looking at and you're, you're like this and you're trying to fight this, that's the same part of you that's doing this that's trying to fight this too. And our job is to go past all fear, past all limitation, past all false beliefs, 
And you don't decide when you get to do that. Because the only part of you that's deciding when that would happen is a part of you that has lived in your past and knows things based on evidence. Your mind can only move based on evidence. So you don't get to decide when you have the breakthrough. You don't get to push it and make it happen. You surrender until finally at one point in your surrender when it's ready and you stop identifying that you're that limitation, you get to a place where finally it breaks away through your acceptance of it. But you're scared if you think you're it. You're scared that you're going to die. So you're keeping your problem alive. When you're searching for a solution, you're keeping your problem alive. When you're trying to mentally fix, it's the problem that's doing the fixing, so it's staying alive. You want to transcend the problem. You want to move past the problem. You want to move beyond you. And you do that by actually surrendering and waiting. Stay there for an hour. Stay there for two hours if you need to. But do it from your body. Don't steer the meditation. Discover that steerer that's trying to get it right. Because that's the thing that's running us, the part that's trying to get it right. Go beyond your story. End the negative scavenger hunt. End the control. Move into your body. Meditate from your body. That's how I do it. Everyone does it differently. But man, do you get something when you just go into full surrender and you don't keep trying to focus your meditation and get it perfect. Don't do that. Do it if you want to for you, but that's not my recommendation at all. How can you access the real you while you're trying to run it? That's not you. You got to see this person that's trying to run it. Who the hell is trying to get it perfect? And how do you know when it's perfect? Because you're loved again? Go to the part of you that is love, that loves this thing by being patient and waiting. That's how you actually have actual transformation. So thanks.